Well, it's wonderful to be here today and great to be following so many fantastic uh, talks that we've already heard, encouraging us to find one thing that we can do to make a difference, to bring transformation in the situations that we're all in. Now, I used to be a family lawyer and time and again, I would have families come to me who were broken, who had lost hope. And that, I think, is the experience that God used to ignite a real passion in me to see family life strengthened in our nation. And I don't need to tell you uh, that family life is in a state of disrepair in our nation. The cost of family breakdown is £46 billion pounds a year and that uh, doesn't even take into account obviously the untold human cost in terms of the suffering uh, that happens to individuals and individual families and I believe in the family. It's a place of security, it can provide the place uh, where we learn our character, our values, it's the place where we learn to give and receive love and so when I was asked to choose one thing that could bring transformation. My first thought was to think of something big, something big that we could all get involved in that would help uh, really bring about the restoration of the family. And in my job as UK Director of Care for the Family, I come across some really interesting situations. So one day I might be in the House of Parliament talking about policy issues to do with the family. I might be speaking on the radio, I might be reading some research, I might be working with other organisations to try and work out strategies to strengthen family life. And many people ask me, they say, what will it take? What will it take to bring about transformation to the family when the need is so great? And I often think about that. And the truth is, Important as those big ideas are, important as the strategies are and the policies, I think the answer is something different. So often it's the simple things that make a difference. And that's what we want to speak about at this afternoon. The small things that make a difference. The power that each of us have to bring about change through the simple things. The Bible has a lot to say about the tongue. And one of the simple ways that we can each bring about change in whatever situation we're in is through the power of the words that we speak. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that our words can have the power of life or of death. And I'll never forget a conversation I had with a young woman once at a Care for the Family event. She came to see me and she told me her story. Uh, she had been in a relationship, the relationship had gone badly wrong, there had been violence and she'd had to flee with her six-year-old and with a suitcase that contained all of her belongings. And as she told me her story, I realised that somehow, someone had made this woman feel that she was absolute rubbish. And as I spoke to her, I saw the lines on her face and they really told of the story of the hard life that, that she had lived. But then behind those lines, there was something else. There was a deep beauty that came from within. And the Bible tells us about that, doesn't it? It talks about the inner beauty. And I simply said to her, you're very beautiful. And she had big, dark eyes. She just looked at me and she walked away. And then she turned around and she came back and she said, what did you say? And I said, you're very beautiful. And she said, no one has ever told me that before. Wow. Five little words. In my mind's eye, I look back now and I see that woman. And she walked out of that room with more self-worth, more dignity, more confidence than when she came in. The power we have by our words just to bring about transformation and change. And in this audience this afternoon, we'll all come from different situations, different family situations, different, different groups of friends, but each one of us has got that power to change things around just by the words we speak to our friends, to our families, in our communities. 
I blame marriages and friendships trans transformed when people have decided to choose to speak positive words, words that bring life, instead of words of criticism and of condemnation. We have a lot of people that come through our house uh, where I live in Bristol, and uh, many of them are young people. And we noticed a while ago that they would got into a bit of a habit. And they would say things, they'd say, horrible jumper. And then they'd go, only joking, or um, you're fat, or not really. And they'd say, oh, it's only a joke when we challenge them on it. But you know, words matter. Yeah. And I guess most of us can remember words that have spoken to us that have been hurtful. That children's rhyme, sticks and stones will break my bones, but words will never hurt me. It's just not true. Words that are said that are hurtful, the wounds can go deep. 16-year-old Jessica Lanny, she was on the social network site Ask FM in September this year, and a friend posted this, you have pretty eyes, but you're fat. And she replied, awesome, but I'm not fat. That evening, she hanged herself. Or 18-year-old Joshua Unsworth, his body was discovered in the garden of his parents' farmhouse in Lancashire. And the last post on his Ask FM website said this, uh, no one likes you. And he replied, I have learned that words are, well, just words, so I don't care. But words aren't just words. We know that. Our words have power, and the Bible tells us that there are consequences to the way that we use our words. The verse that I mentioned before about having our words having the power of life and death, it goes on to say this. It says, uh, the tongue has the power of life and death. Those that love it will eat its fruit. So we eat the fruit of the words that we give. And the words that we use to each other, the words that we use about each other, they matter. They matter a lot. And we have the power, simply, to make that change just by the words that we speak. Now, it's strange. I'm married to a guy called Richard, and in our marriage, we've been through some tough times, and we've had a lot of laughs as well. But actually, it's the little things that uh, I remember that make me remember the, the idea of the importance of the words that we say to each other. And I remember a while ago, we were taking the car to the garage to be serviced, and I was following him in another car, and uh, I am completely hopeless at directions. I have no sense of direction whatsoever, so I was sticking to him like glue. We came to a roundabout, and at this roundabout, uh, he stopped, I was behind him, and there, were quite a lot, there was quite a lot of traffic going around. So we waited. Then there was a massive, massive gap. And so I assumed he'd gone, put my foot on the accelerator. <gasps> Only thing was he hadn't gone, and so I hit him right up the back of his car, uh, causing a bit of damage to both cars, which wasn't great. He came round, he knocked on my window, and he said, uh, what did you do that for? Which wasn't the most <laughs> helpful thing for him to say. Um, I have to say, he probably was, uh, I felt, you know, he could have uh, rightly been very cross with me for this. So I was feeling pretty rubbish about what I had done. So, because we had two cars then that needed to be taken to the garage to be repaired. But then I got this little text in the afternoon and it said this, don't worry about the car. You're a great wife, you're a fab mum, you're my best friend, and I love you. It was hooray. And that made all the difference to my day. Just turned it round, one little thing, a little text. I want to show you a film clip, clip now, and this is from the film Cinderella Man. Now the story is set as uh, America is just heading into the Great Depression. It's a true story, and there's a man called James, James J. Braddock, and uh, he has been a boxer in the past, but he's not earning his money that way anymore. His family are in absolute poverty, and he decides he's going to have one last fight to try and get some money. And his wife, uh, paid, paid by Rennie Zellweger, she doesn't want him to fight because he's going to fight uh, the world champion called Max Beer. And Max Beer is fitter and younger and stronger than Braddock. The last two people that uh, Beer fought in the ring actually were killed. And so she, she won't say goodbye to him. 
He leaves the house and he feels really rejected, doesn't have any support from her at all. Gives, he, she gives a really icy cold shoulder. And we take up the story now in the changing room. And you know, buoyed up by those affirming, encouraging words, those words that reminded him who he was, he went on to win the fight. We've got that power to remind people of who they really are just by the words that we speak. A while ago, my daughter had a job in her gap year at a local gym. It wasn't going very well, she wasn't enjoying it, and the second week she didn't really want to go back. And to encourage her, I put a little note in her lunchbox. It was about the size of a postage stamp. And all it said was, we think you're great, little smiley face. <laughs> Didn't think anything more about it. She went travelling for six months. She came back. So eight months later, she said to me, can you get something out of my purse? And I did. I opened up her purse. There inside was that little note. She had travelled all around the world with it in her pocket. Because it said to her, you're valued, you're loved. Four little words, simple things, one thing that can make the difference. At the end of September, we received some terrible news that one of our children's school friends had died suddenly of an unexplained illness. He was 18 and he was just about to head off to university. And at his funeral, his sister spoke so movingly about her relationship with him, how she loved him, and how she was convinced of her certain hope that one day she would be with him in heaven. But then this is what happened next. She turned and she looked at the coffin, and this is what she said. She said, did I ever tell you how I was proud to be your sister? Did I ever tell you how much I loved your laugh and your smile. Did, he ever, did I ever tell you how much I loved going on holiday with you? Did I ever tell you that when your friends came round and I was grumpy it was because they wanted to spend time with you and not with me? Did I ever tell you I loved you? Did I ever tell you? Friends, we don't know what tomorrow will bring so let's not miss a single opportunity to speak affirming, encouraging words to the people that we love. And the reason that we can do that is because God, our Heavenly Father, speaks those words of love and affirmation to us. If we're alone, he says to us, I will never leave you or forsake you. If we're feeling that we don't have any friends, he says, I have called you friends. If we're feeling unloved, he says to us, I have loved you with an everlasting love. And it is from that deep security of knowing that we are loved unconditionally by our Heavenly Father, that we, each one of us, has the power to do that one thing, to speak the, those transforming words to each other. Did I ever tell you? 